द एनिमी क्लास ट्वेल्व चैप्टर फोर विस्तास सी बी एस ई इंग्लिश कोर दिस लेसन इज एक्सप्लेन इन इंग्लिश द राइटर इज पर्ल एस बाक द एनिमी हाई लाइट्स हाउ अ जापनीज डॉक्टर सेव द लाइफ ऑफ एन अमेरिकन प्रिजनर ऑफ वॉर एंड राइज इज अबव नैरो नेशनल प्रेजिडिसिस he risks his honor career position and life by sheltering a soldier of the enemy camp the author has beautifully portrayed the conflict in the doctor's mind as an individual and as a citizen with a sense of national loyalty it is his emotion of not frivolously wasting a human life that makes him take this decision this is a story of true compassion that rises above petty differences obscure biases and incurable hatred it gives the message that humanism transcends all man-made prejudices and barriers dr sadao upholds the ethics of the medical profession by treating an enemy this story gives a great lesson of peace love sympathy fellow feeling and humanism it is really very difficult to understand why dr sadao saved an enemy but it is his humanity that is the primary reason the humanity of dr sadao and hana raise a lot of relevant questions about war love peace suffering loss and humanity it actually redefines the true enemy who is the true enemy the true enemy is our hatred prejudice violence and war and this story redefines it by showing how love always conquers these negative emotions setting of the story it is set in a coastal town of japan in the year 1941 during the second world war when japan had attacked pearl harbor the japanese were hostile to the americans and ready to kill any american found on their soil the first part of the story deals with the childhood and education of dr sadao hoki his house was situated on the coast of japan and he had been living there since his childhood when he was little he used to look at the islands that were situated at some distance they were visible from the coast he sometimes visited them and he questioned his father about them dr sadao's father called these islands to be the stepping stones for japan's future little sadao childishly questioned that where would they reach from those islands his father replied that the future had no limits and it depended on how a person shaped it for sadao's father his education was the chief concern hence he sent sadao to america to learn surgery and medicine by the time he returned he had become famous and was perfecting a discovery which could make wounds entirely clean they had met in america but sadao knew that his father would get him married to a japanese girl only so for this reason he made sure that she was a japanese before falling in love with her sadao considered himself to be lucky to have accidentally met her at an american professor's house he thought that 
had he not met her he would not have got a good wife even after so many years of marriage and two children they loved each other they had not got married in haste in america they had come back to japan taken permission from the father and then they got married in a traditional japanese manner as they were standing looking at the sea they saw a black figure coming out of the mist he walked unsteadily with his arms above the head and then disappeared in the mist upon seeing the figure hana reacted by asking who was that they bent forward to have a closer look at the man he was crawling on his hands and knees then he fell on his face and kept on lying there probably he had fainted as the area had villages where a lot of fishermen lived they thought that he was probably a fisherman who had been washed off his boat they ran to help him this part of the coast had dangerous sharp and pointed rocks the man was badly injured the sand on one side of him had already a stain of red soaking through which indicated that he was wounded the man was an american he lay motionless he lay unconscious and knew nothing that they did for him As Sadao was a doctor he moved his trained fingers around the man's back to search for the wound it was a gunshot he had been injured a few days ago and had not got any medical help Hana was also concerned that the man was injured and bleeding due to the mist they could not be seen by anyone moreover the fishermen and the beachcombers did not visit the place at that time of the day sadao said that the best thing was to put the man into the sea as he was a prisoner of war if they handed him over to the army he would be tortured and would die in the prison but if they gave him shelter they would be arrested for sheltering an enemy the kindest act for them would be to put him back into the sea yet both of them did not move ahead to do it sadao was reluctant about throwing him into the sea so what to do they would hand him over to the police could they do that without any hesitation they stared at him with dislike because he was an enemy an american sadao's only worry was that he was wounded sadao when hana lifted the injured man into the house he was so light just like a bird that had not been given food for a very long time he only had feathers and skeleton just like that they carried him to an empty bedroom which belonged to sadao's father it had not been used since the time he had died he was put on the thick mat on the floor everything in the room was japanese because sadao's father had disliked foreign things The man was very dirty he had to be washed Sadao asked Hana to get hot water she asked the servant to wash the injured man the enemy's face was so pale that Sadao bent forward and felt his heart beat to see if he was alive if the man was not operated upon he would die but there was a bigger problem if he was saved he would die at the hands of the japanese army hana screamed with fear and asked sadao not to save the man she feared that if he lived they would be in danger but it would be worse if the man died the man had a lot of energy which had kept him alive he was very young and at that age people do have a lot of energy Sadao decided that something had to be done with the injured man. Hana followed him as he walked out of the room because she did not want to remain in the room alone with this man. He was an enemy after all and was a threat to them. Hana called her servants. They were scared after hearing their master's words regarding the injured man. 
the old gardener was agitated and said that sir thou must not treat the injured white man he was destined to die as he had been wounded by a gunshot secondly the rocks of the sea had wounded him further if sir thou healed the wounds then the gun and the sea would treat him as enemies and seek revenge somehow the gun represents the japanese army and the sea represents the country of japan if they treated the enemy they would be punished by japan hana politely said to the gardener that she would pass his message to sadao she was frightened though not superstitious like the old man she thought that helping an enemy could never be good for them she asked yumi that is one of the servants to get hot water into the room where the injured man was kept hana asked yumi to wash the white man but she disobeyed and firmly said that she would never wash that injured american hana screamed at yumi but she had a fierce look of protest which scared hana she was worried that if the servants reported something different from what had happened they could be in trouble hana asked yumi to return to her work she left the room at once hana was left alone with the white man she would have been afraid to remain there alone but her anger made her stay in the room hana took a small clean towel dipped it in the steaming hot water and washed his face she kept on washing his upper body till it was quite clean her anger was decreasing but she started becoming restless she did not want the man to freeze due to cold weather so she put the quilt on him after which sadao had decided to operate upon him he started his work he asked hana to get some towels she also brought old pieces of matting from the back veranda so that the blood would not ruin the floor by the time hana reached the room she saw that blood had overflowed through the bandage on the man's wound it had stained the mat beneath him her efforts were wasted Hana cried that the mat had been spoiled but Sadao did not bother about it he just asked Hana to turn the man over then she told Sadao that Yumi had refused to wash the injured man Hana told Sadao that Yumi had refused to wash the injured man he did not stop but made small fast movements as he cleaned the american carefully this shows how skilled and professional he was he was only bothered about healing the injured man and performing his work well sadao told hana that she would have to inject the injured man with a substance that induces insensitivity to pain hana replied that she had never done that earlier sadao said that it was very easy he was removing the packing and now the blood started flowing faster he looked at the wound with the help of the bright surgeon's light fixed on his forehead the bullet was inside the man's body he wondered how deep the wound made by the rock was if it was not very deep he could get the bullet out the bleeding was not from the surface which meant that the wound was deep and the man had already lost a lot of blood when hana saw sadao inspecting the wound she could not see the site her feet sadao ordered hana not to faint as if it was in her hands really he could not stop his work and continued inspecting the wound if he stopped the injured man would certainly die hana put both her hands on her mouth jumped up and ran out of the room Sadao heard her vomiting in the garden but he continued with his work. Why did this happen? Because Hana was not used to seeing all the blood and this kind of a procedure in front of her. As he needed her help to operate the man, he thought it would be better for her to empty her stomach so that she would not feel uneasy time and again. He was reminded that Hana was seeing an operation for the first time. and it was not a pleasant thing to see 
Sadao was irritated and impatient as his wife was under stress and he was not able to help her due to the injured man. Sadao thought that there was no reason for him to make efforts to save the man because there was no reason for him to be alive. Sadao became merciless and started working fast. The injured man moaned in a state of unconsciousness. But Sadao kept on working without paying attention to the man's pain. Sadao told the injured man that he was free to cry in pain and he was not concerned about it. He did not want to operate upon him. Han asked Sadao for the anesthetic which she had to administer to the injured man. She was now prepared to help him. The man had started to gain consciousness and it was important to sedate him. Hana held the bottle and some cotton in her hands and placed it near his nostrils. Sadao did not stop his work and added that she should remove the cotton when the man started to breathe badly. This lesson covered the explanation from page number 24 to 34. Wait for my next video to catch up the rest of the lesson. If you learned from this video lesson, do like, share, comment and subscribe to my channel. Do press the bell icon for the latest updates. Keep watching.